Do you read Stephen King? Good news, there's a club for you, the Losers Club. Every Friday, us losers journey through the never-ending wastelands of King's Dominion. We sink our teeth into each of King's novels, dive deep into the lore, and review every adaptation. Even better, we're always having guests over. Thomas Jane, Will Wheaton, Mary Lambert, Mick Garris, the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Join us as we read on through long days and pleasant nights. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sounds and the Consequence Podcast Network. I want to thank everybody for listening, especially those of you all who subscribe. Check out all the interviews we put out every single week. There are new ones uh, dropped every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're not already a subscriber, it is a great way to keep up with your favorite artists, discover new ones, and uh, know what's happening out in the music world. You can find us at all the major podcast spots like iTunes and Apple Podcasts, as well as Spotify and YouTube, or wherever you get your favorite podcast from. Just type in Kyle Meredith with subscribe. We'll take care of the rest from there. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today I'm going to be talking with Avril Lavigne. Last year, she released a brand new record called Head Above Water, and one of the tracks that was on there, a really personal track, uh, one of the first songs she wrote for the record was called Warriors. That track has been re-recorded now with the frontline workers during the uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in mind. Uh, it's now retitled uh, We Are Warriors, so we're going to talk about that track and what spoke to her, why she decided to do the re-record of it, and how she makes anthem-sized ideas a personal experience, not just just for us listening, but also for, for her and, and when she's writing these songs. We'll get into the history of this record, dating all the way back to her dealing with Lyme disease in the middle part of the last decade, uh, really arriving to a point where she didn't even know if she would continue with music. And it was these songs, she says, that kind of helped pull her out of that. So we'll hear the journey of the entire record, Head Above Water, as well as some of the uh, musical diversions that we're not used to hearing from Avril Lavigne, like the jazzier side of the song, Tell Me It's Over. It's one of my favorite moments of this new record. I'm also going to ask her about self-producing. Is there a future of that? You know, she tells a story in a lot of other interviews about f- having trouble finding uh, the right producers. Uh, that's why this record took so long. So could there be a future since she writes her own songs where she could produce her own record? And finally, we're also going to wrap up with just the fact that with everything that's happened in her life, this is not a sad record. In fact, when you take a song like Warriors and make it We Are Warriors for the frontline uh, workers, it just goes to show that there's a lot of inspiration within these tracks. So let's get into it. It's Kyle Meredith talking with Avril Lavigne. Hi. It's a pleasure to talk to you, uh, and especially behind such, uh, you know, powerful music that you've got out there right now. It's it's really been, you know, I can say Warriors was a powerful song to begin with. I know it's become a, a bit even more so uh, recently. Uh, and I, that's what I thought I would start with, because you, you've repurposed this song for the current movement. What did it originally stand for for you uh, versus what it has become? So I initially wrote Warrior about my own health battle um, with Lyme disease a few years back. And now that we're going through what we're going through in the world with COVID-19, it, you know, just like seeing all of the frontline workers, they are. Um, what they're doing and how they're all stepping up and holding the world together. They are the warriors of today. So after my tour got canceled, I was like trying to figure out something that I could do just like musically or creatively to give back. So I took the song Warrior, re-recorded it, changed it to We Are Warriors in honor of the frontline workers. Did all that from home and put together a like a powerful music video using current footage of what's going on today. And the proceeds of the song to We Are Warriors goes to my foundation and Project Hope and in supplying PPE for medical workers around the world. Which is which is fantastic. I mean, a, a lot of artists are, are trying to figure out, you know, how to use their platforms right now. And it's amazing that you're doing something like this. When, when you have a song like that, I, I think it's safe to call this, you know, an, an anthem uh, as it was in the beginning and especially now. These are big, broad words. How have you found out to make an anthem personal? Because that can't be an easy thing. 
that's because I guess because I'm writing my songs and I write my songs especially like this last album Head Above Water it was just like so about like so personal all my songs like are but this is on a very deep level of like what I was going through in my life at that time like my album the Head Above Water album was so healing for me and like I didn't know if I would be doing music anymore with like what I had gone through with like my health struggle and I came out turning to music and and like writing songs without even trying to write them so like head above water and warrior were the first two songs i wrote that were just like on my heart it's about me fighting and trying to survive what i was going through and like the beauty of music is that it can mean different things to different people and like with this song warrior it's taking on a whole new life of its own and it's like now has a whole new meaning with like what's going on in the world today and that's that's what I do. I just turn to, to music and I, I write about what I'm going through. For this album, for, for Head Above Water to have been written in real time the way it was and, and to really document your, your own journey, I thought, you know, some artists write about, you know, moments where they're looking back and some artists write about a fictional character study. But to be something that was written so much in real time, do you perceive the earlier songs different than the ones that did come towards the end? Like, can you see the journey in that way? Yeah, like other songs, are, it's just like the two songs are about my health battle, and then the other songs are, like, some of them are, like, relationships, sort of different, like, different other things I've gone through in my life. Like, um, it was in me, it's like, about, like, believing in yourself and, like, listening to your gut or like all along like dumb blonde is a sort of like about just like female empowerment i touched on a bunch of different subjects on this album that like maybe i didn't totally hit on before like before my <laughs> a lot of the songs are like teen and like boy bashing and i'm all about that but like this album was just like a lot, there was like a lot of growth i'm in a different point in my life and i was going through different stuff and i sort of like express myself like raw and in other ways and what's cool is I've been at home now at this time too and just like creating so much and still like writing other songs and it's so different than that album so that's it's all about just like um tapping into like what you're going through and I try to just be sincere with my music and that's the only way that that's the way I like it the most but I'm just kind of like what I'm feeling at the time. Well, there's uh, there's so many musical touch points and different styles all over the record, as, as you've said. I feel like, you know, a song like Tell Me It's Over really shows an interesting direction for you. Uh, I, I don't know if that's something that you're, you're looking to explore more in the future, but uh, I, I certainly hope so. Um, how, did, how did you come upon the sound of that one with, with Tell Me It's Over? I wrote Tell Me It's Over with it was like a concept idea that Ryan Cabrera brought to me. Um, it was like, I was wanting to do some um, soulful music and kind of hit on some like jazz vibes. So with Crush and Tell Me It's Over, those two do that. And we had picked the producer, Johan Carlson, and sat with him and explained the direction. Um, just like musically, I got to sort of like explain band sonically stylistically on on this album and just sing my butt off more and just like kind of go back down to my roots like grew up starting in church and country fairs and stuff like that and so I really got to kind of go back to that stylistically a little bit um and have fun with like a more soulful sound I mean yeah I would definitely like to do a little more of that in the future for sure I, I'd read about you talking about, you know, going into this record, one of the reasons why it took a little bit longer was that you had trouble finding the right producers who were the right fit. And I kind of yeah. wondered, you know, you do write your own songs and not every artist does, especially in pop. You do. Could there be a record in the future that's completely self-produced or, you know, is that something that could happen? At this point, yeah, it could happen, but it sort of like is hard for me because I'm writing the song. Like, I like to be able to have somebody else produce it, and then I can focus on performing. Um, I do produce. Like, I produced I Fell in Love with the Devil, literally because I couldn't get a producer for it. Because, like, I just, like, it was so hard to find producers that wanted to, like, take songs that they weren't a part of writing. And it was important to me to, like, so I would have to, like, give all my percentages up as a writer to, like, all these different producers. Like, I was so annoying. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever, I don't care. But that was the one song where I was, like, I'm doing this on my own and, like, writing.
writing and producing it. And that was fun. And I did that at my house. And I, did, I don't mind doing that. It just, like, takes, like, a lot. So if I'm up for it, for sure. Like, I co-produced We Are Warriors. So that's, that's a song I produced. And I produced I Fell in Love with the Devil. And that's fun. But I'll, I love having somebody who can just take over the track. Because then it inspires me to, like, finish the song, too. So it depends. on Every song is sort of different. It's, like, some I like to write at the piano. Some I like to do with the guitar. Some I like to like 75% of it on my own. And then I'm like, I want to bring someone in to like help finesse it. Sometimes I like start songs brand new, like right, like fresh on the spot with somebody else. So it's like every, every time it's different. One thing that was really impressive about this record is considering the things that you're talking about, singing about, it's not a sad album. Uh, which I think could have been a very different road to take for a lot of people. This could have been a sad album for them. What kept you from going that direction for it to to be the exact opposite of that? I'm a strong person, and I like to have the message of strength in my music so that I can look at the situation in, in the eye and keep moving forward. And that's how we have to be in life, like through different things we go through, whether it's like, troubles in a relationship or like with your health or like whatever it is you're trying to figure out what direction you're going in your life or not and like I like my message to my fans to be inspirational so that people can like feel good and get strength and and like and it can encourage them and that's what I love about We Are Warriors is I hope that it there's some inspiration in there for people during this time in the world that people I hope that it brings I hope that it brings hope <laughs> and um, makes people feel good and encourages people and just sort of also just really wanted to express and show my gratitude and honor the um, frontline workers, too. Well, it's great to see what you're doing, and especially with a song like this, you know, something that was personal and, and, and giving it to those those folks out there. Thank you for doing that, uh, putting some good in the world. And Avril, thanks so much for taking the time to talk about it today. It's a, It's been a real pleasure. Yes, it's great to have the song be able to evolve like that. And thank you so much for taking the time today. It's lovely speaking with you. You too. Take care. Stay safe. Take care. Right, bye. bye. And my thanks, Avril Levine, talking about the, not only the new record, Head Above Water, but that new version of Warriors called We Are Warriors that's out now. And as she mentioned, all proceeds go help the frontline workers that are out there uh, doing that work every single day. So thanks to Avril for the conversation. Uh, thanks to you for checking out the series, too. Again, before you get out of here, if you're not already a subscriber, I, I hope you get inspired by this one to hit that subscribe button to keep up with this new interviews released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Spotify, YouTube iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. Just type in Kyle Meredith with. And then after that, head to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's WFPK.org. Dot O-R-G. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me on uh, all the major social media platforms at Kyle Meredith. Make sure to follow and like along there as well. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media.